Mapping out a system begins with identifying the components represented by nodes in a systems diagram. If you're new to this, first watch my video entitled Systems Theory – Defining Your Systems Nodes. In this video, I'll be building a systems diagram for a one-to-one -one technology initiative aimed at innovating and improving student achievement. The concepts, however, apply to any systems diagram. Given systems diagrams are complex, I'm only representing five of the components here. Your systems map may have different nodes, based on the ones you selected to study, but the concepts for the mapping are the same. It's easy to focus on the nodes. Organizations create action plans around putting the components you see here in place. However, the health and success of any system rests with the lines, not the nodes. What counts is how well the nodes relate to one another. What the interrelationships are, that's what makes a system. As a simple example, imagine that a teacher writes a great lesson plan on the skeletal system. In and of itself, the teacher would be rated quite highly for this plan. She then offers an outstanding set of instructional activities on three main types of rocks found on the Earth. Then she gives her students a well-crafted assessment on photosynthesis. If you were to assess the teacher based on the individual components, she would be a superstar. However, you can easily see this represents a failed instructional system. You would never want to plan and assess different content from instruction. The health of the system is in the lines. More often than not, initiatives succeed or fail based on the interrelationships that exist among the nodes, represented by an arrow from each node to every other node. Each line in a systems diagram represents the impact one component has on another. The pair of lines between two components explains the interrelationships. Each component depends upon the other. The words to describe these interrelationships should be descriptive, meaningful, and nuanced. For example, the instructional vision should drive the professional development. All professional development should begin with that instructional vision. That means that the professional development should then strengthen the instructional vision. If the vision drives the PD and the PD strengthens the vision, you have a good systems interrelationship. Let's look at the interrelationship between professional development and instructional materials. Now, while the vision is more likely going to define the actual instructional resources, professional development should promote those resources. Any professional development sessions offered to teachers should include the use of those instructional materials that they will use with their students. Conversely, the instructional materials should enrich the professional development being offered. The professional development is better for having these instructional resources. The words in a systems diagram carry both meaning and strength of effect. For example, the word drive means that one component causes the other to exist, and it's a strong relationship. So the instructional vision causes professional development to exist. A less strong similar relationship than drives would be fuels. An even weaker relationship would be informs, meaning that a provides data and insights for B to be more effective, but informs is a much weaker relationship than drives. Now, don't get me wrong. That weakness is not defining the health of the system. It's just that this relationship is not as important as others. Think back to the relationship teachers should experience among lesson planning, instruction, and assessment. Assessment might drive lesson planning. However, the results of last year's students on the same assessment might simply inform lesson planning, offering some insights, but not necessarily driving the planning. So systems words matter in that they should represent both the effect one component has on another and the strength of the effect. Take a look at some more triplets of systems words that you might want to use. There are no absolute right words in systems diagrams. Use what works for you. You may look at this list and see the relationship somewhat differently. You might have more words to add. As you develop your system's thinking, the words will come more easily. Spend some time reviewing all of the interrelationships built into this section of the systems diagram for a one-to-one -one technology initiative. You may want to pause the video at this point to study it further. 
Okay, it's time for you to define the lines in your own systems diagram. Have fun.